With lucky landslots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino, asking people, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kid's PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. I call. Bullshit! Uh-oh. What do you call bullshit she, on? I don't, I don't think she's really recording, so we'll see after this whole thing, because my day's been shit so we'll see how uh if i'm able to make this actually work Uh oh yeah that kind of day huh that kind of week already it's 11 50 in the morning and i'm already stressed out what the hell's going on man why is it 11 50 and we're recording this what is wrong with this uh i don't know but it's hey it's almost 2 p.m where i'm at so you know oh yeah there you go that's right it's you almost, it's almost time cocktail <laughs> time oh by the way i uh i was up in washington um wait wait were week. you in washington or washington i was in washington okay my family's in Washington. No. But I was up there and uh, we went to, uh, I was in Seattle for a couple of days. We went to this nice little fancy bar and I got a drink and I got a whiskey sour, um, which finally got rid of beer, you know, but they put an egg white in it. Ah, yes. Yep. Mm. So there's two, there's, there's two ways of making it. The egg white makes it very frothy and foamy and it's actually yep. pretty damn delicious. Yeah, it is actually. I had two of them. It was scrumptious and I wanted to know, were they trying to poison me or is that a <laughs> no, that that's, something you practiced all the that, time? That's a legit yeah. thing uh, for a really well-made uh, sour. Um, I will say that bartenders hate it when you order those though, because it takes a lot more shaking in the, um, in the shaker to make those. Cause you really have to mix the egg in well. Yeah. Um, so that's why at home, when I make one with an egg, I have like a little special like drink mixer that just goes and I, like, yeah, it froths it all up. So, cause I, you literally have to shake it for like two minutes to get it right. So, uh, most bartenders go, Oh, thanks asshole for ordering that. Um, well, uh, it was scrumptious. And the and the lady bartender did shake the shaker uh, for for a little bit, which made the drink taste better. Mm. Um, but it wasn't you know hard to watch it either. So yeah, it was not. <laughs> but tasted yeah, like, would... tasted like boobies and syphilis. <laughs> no, so I, I had to ask that because I had never had that before, and I thought I'd had a lot of different stuff. So yeah, that's the old school way of making it. They kind of don't do it as much anymore. But in my opinion, that's like the more delicious way of doing it. It tastes yeah, really it was... good. Super yummy, and uh, uh, pretty much everything after that, uh, those drinks, I don't remember the rest. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of you, yeah, I was hoping you'd remember <laughs> something. I kind of wonder how your trip did. Did you Did you get to go to, uh, you were going to go see some sporting events, or what, what else were you doing? Well, I was going to go to opening day baseball, but we know how those crybabies handled it. So now yeah. uh, that was canceled and pushed back. So I went to a Kraken game, which is the Seattle's NHL team. Ah, uh, yes. I hear they're he, uh, opening like the whole, uh, uh, like when the game starts, like they do the unleash the Kraken and all that. I hear that's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, the light on the um, on the ice, they, they make the lights just on the ice and it looks like water and there's like, yeah, it's pretty dope. It, it's actually really, really cool. And Key Arena, they totally remodeled. They just basically tore everything out except for the roof and then remodeled everything and rebuilt everything inside. And it's actually pretty damn cool. It's really nice. And yeah, that's, that's right next to the Space Needle, too. And you were there for a while, uh, uh, too, right? Like, you, it wasn't like you were just there for, like, a quick turnaround. No, I was supposed to be a quick turnaround, but it cost, like, $500 more to fly in, on a three-day trip than a seven-day trip. So I was like, whatever. Yeah, um, right. So, yeah, so, no, we were in Seattle for a few days, hanging out with the boys, and then I went over and hung out with my family for a bit. Uh, went up to the mountains, went turkey hunting for a little bit with my nieces, and then uh, saw some elk, deer, turkey, lots of birds. Have a picture of a cougar walking through our camp. We weren't at camp, but it was right there. So yeah, it was fun. It was a nice little getaway. Um, you know, just from everything in a sense. Is it funny how? Uh, I mean, not that either of us really gave that much of more than two shits about COVID for the most part. I mean, you know, some basic stuff, but not not for the most part. It's not like we were scared of it or anything like that. But I th isn't it funny that you during COVID probably did more traveling <laughs> than people do in like a ten year span. Yeah, I, I believe that, but also my family, we travel a lot. So 
we like to go and do places and explore places. So we were the first little bit of COVID when everything was kind of shut down, we were getting stir crazy toward the end. So that's when we, I think, drove to Washington. I mean, hell, you went during COVID and did a reality show in like Idaho or whatever. Like you, would you call me? No, hey, yeah, no. <laughs> I know. I said Udaho, Udaho, not Idaho. Yeah, um, we did. I know we did that, and that was a actually a badass flight too because we got the rose to ourselves. And you know, COVID was like high then, but it was, yeah, you got you kind of like went in like the really like early where people were like really freaked out time. Yeah, it was don't sit near me or stand near me or talk, and they you can't stand up until they let your row go. Yeah, it was really weird, but uh, kind of nice in a sense. Well, that's awesome. I'm, uh, I'm glad you get to travel. I am doing, uh, I, I boring travel because uh, I don't know how you do it with kids, but like, man, it's too damn expensive to fly and travel with kids. Uh, so that's probably why we'd never go anywhere. Well, I, you, the trick is you, you get them hooked on, hooked on some sort of, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't know what you call it, supplement. So they stops their growth and then you just fold them up in your bag and they ride carry on to you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, dude, Cassie fits in a carry on bag real easy. Aiden, he's 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 leaning more toward a checked bag now. No, oh, yeah, you know, <laughs> as they get bigger. Uh, but you, you know, I, I just I'm always like really impressed with how much you travel with the family. Man. I love it. That's super cool, and I I definitely am jealous because we don't travel as much, mainly just because of the cost. Uh, but we, um, uh, God, I'd really love to though. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm you, uh, you, uh, you, oh, uh, uh, you traveled some, but most of it's for work, and then we, yeah, a lot of work stuff. family. Yeah. You, when you do travel with your family, you put them in front of people that they probably shouldn't be talking to. And they're pretending that they're like mentally disabled or something. So you can get on the plane earlier. So that's Listen, I why. mean, you, you got to do what you got to do, right? When the, when the flight is oversold and they're going to start cutting seats and you have like the C group boarding pass where, you know, you're like one of the last ones to get on. Yeah. You do what it takes. And you know what's funny is I did that. Oh yeah. And, yeah. I was on the way back. It was my, I, I had a layover in Seattle, uh, Seattle to Ontario was my last flight uh, Tuesday. And um, they were like, okay, we're going to call anybody that needs extra help. Okay, we're going to call first class. Okay, we're going to call comfort plus. And I'm like, fuck it, I'm just going to go. Yeah. I walk right up. Beep. They're not going to say anything. They can't like unscan my ticket. So I walk on, right? It's just me. And I'm row 19, which is the very last row, right? So they know I'm in, I shouldn't have come on the plane yet. <laughs> There's just like the people up front and then me in the very back of the plane, like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, 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 you know, I, I say, do whatever advantage you can get. I've been bumped from a flight before and it's stupid. I've been bumped from a flight and then they accidentally kept my luggage on the flight and it didn't wind up. I've been, I mean, like, Ooh, yeah, like you're getting it. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those things that like, listen, I already walk with a little bit of a limp anyways. And so, you know, if I'm traveling for business, maybe I crank up the limp a little bit more than it really is. And, uh, I, oh, I funny. my way over there and you know, how old are you? I'm 41. And how how long do you have the hip or leg problem? About twelve years. Okay, my mom nah, just like got thirteen a, years. Yeah, my yeah. mom just got a hip problem, and she's seventy. Uh, yeah, what's yeah, wrong with you? Uh, pretty much everything. At this oh, you point. know what? It's like when they say somebody's an old soul. You're an old body. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a young soul in an old body. <laughs> Well, uh, shit, man, um, uh, oh. that was my trip, uh, but I have something else to tell you. I don't know if you saw the post about um, about the girl I sleep with. Yeah, and, and then uh, how does, <laughs> I don't know how Evelyn feels about that, but tell me about the girl. You sleeping with her or the? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was uh, super cool. Like, yeah. you know, you, your your wife has been in this industry, in the, in the uh, radio industry for so damn long, which is just amazing. Um, her staying power and her kind of professionalism and that. And I saw that she's finally for like the first time in like 800 years going to be able to like eat breakfast with her kids and stuff. Yes. Uh, and maybe so not have to go to bed at like 9 PM or something like that. Like she could stay up till like midnight watching uh, Dr. Strange for the 400th time with you. Oh, she already does that. <laughs> she did. She's been doing that for 20 plus years with me. Um, no. Yeah. Uh, so ever since I've met Evelyn, she's been doing mornings on 99.1 KGGI in Riverside, uh, San Bernardino County in uh, Southern California. Now, uh, I was doing a morning show at the time across town at Alt uh, or X1039. But that's not the point. She's been there for over 20 years. Morning show started when she was 19. Uh, had a couple of renditions of the show because a couple of things happened. And, you know, they restructure, they rebuild. And, you know, eventually... It's just time for change. So they, uh, they decided they're going to bring in a new morning show. They shifted Evelyn over to middays. Uh, she's going to be there from 11, uh, 10, to, 10 to 1, which is going to be great. She doesn't have to get there super early. She can get up with the kids, take them to school. 
She can get there, do her shift and bounce. It's going to be good for her, I think, all around because she's not going to know. She doesn't know anything else. Like, she doesn't know anything else right. but getting she, up super damn early. Doing, yeah, she's been doing this for like, or it's going to, uh, Monique's uh, dad has worked graveyard his whole life, right? And then, God. like, uh, his whole life, just he always just worked that shift. And then when he retired about a year and a half ago, it's like this switch over to learn how to be a normal day person yeah. is insanely difficult because it's just that's all he's ever known. And while I'm sure Evelyn will definitely enjoy her little extra sleep ins and all that kind of stuff, it still is going to take her a while because she did it for so long. Not even her, me, the rest of all well, the whole family, all of us. We're like, yeah. what is this bitch doing in the house? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, I was like, I was laying in bed this morning and the alarm went off and I just turned it off and rolled back over. Evelyn's like, so that's what you do in the weekdays. And I'm like, <laughs> shut up. She goes like, to the bathroom. She goes, you got to get up. And I'm like, why? You can't take him to school. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I would say, uh, Hey, Evelyn, oh. <laughs> you, you, you need to spend the next year taking them to school. I am officially off duty. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll get them after school. Like I always do anyway. So <laughs> that's what I should do. Yeah. I should be like, all right, for the next six to eight months, Oliver was a victim of a system. No, that's, color purple um oh yeah no so um mm -hmm, that's gonna happen and she uh still is gonna be on saturday mornings on kgi and then she's gonna be weekend uh saturday afternoon or sunday afternoon on coast 103 and uh, 103 nine, 103 five. well she is jamaican so that's why she has so many jobs uh you're also you're making jamaican. me crazy <laughs> jamaican me crazy um yeah in other in other news uh i don't know if you anyway. actually, i know you heard uh this really sad news about Bruce Willis. Um, you know, yeah. he has a disease, which it's no point getting into the disease. What I learned in, in listening to some, some medical stuff, talk about it. All it really means is it's early onset dementia. Yeah. So uh, apparently he's been showing signs of it for years now. Um, and in a way, if you think about it, think of the movies that he's put out in the past, like four or five years, they've all gone straight to video. Um, a couple of them went to like really weird streaming platforms. Like uh, his most recent movie went to uh, Fubo TV. Didn't, Another he one went to, to, didn't he try to catch up with the Fast and Furious franchise and do like seven more diehards over the last five years? Well, or like versions of Die Hard, but because he couldn't get the rights, it was called something else, but it was just a ripoff of Die Hard. Hard but, die and, and what's funny is everyone was completely hammering him for all these really shitty movies he was doing. And then now when you find out like, oh, he's been like this for a while, um, it almost feels like elder abuse. Like, were they making him do these <laughs> movies so that they can make money as a family? And he's like, just trotting them out there. Like, it reminds me of, like what they're doing with Joe Biden. It's like, ah, uh, he's probably not. Oh, Joe he's Biden's a little senile. Like one. Biden's obviously like not quite a hundred percent. And they're like trotting them out there. Like, yeah, you're the president. Go, Mr. President. I'm I feel surprised. the same thing with Bruce Willis. It's like, you're doing great, Bruce. As he like, can't remember you know, 50 like line, 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 line. <laughs> line oh, is God. hello. That's all you had to say. Line. Uh, as soon as those Secret Service people start walking very close and doing some weekend at Bernie shit with Biden, he's gonna yeah. be like, you're gonna think. Yeah, it's weird that every time <laughs> Biden nods, it looks like his Secret Service guy's yanking on a string. string. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's a, when he fell hey. down those steps, they were just getting the system going. Yeah, exactly. It was still early on the process, but it's really sad and and an interesting yeah, uh, up, side dude. story about that. Did you so? Uh, the Razzies, which everyone knows is oh, like yeah. the, uh, the antithesis to the Oscars. It's uh, where they give out the awards for the worst performances or whatever. For the first time in their history, they rescinded a Razzie award. Which Oh, from a recent movie from Bruce? For, from Bruce Willis. They gave him a Razzie award. And then after they found out that uh, about his dementia, they felt it was kind of cruel since obviously his performance might have been tied to this. So they rescinded the award and actually sent him a letter saying, uh, we are sorry and we wish you the best of health. And I thought that was actually kind of funny that they're like uh, taking away a fake award that never really existed. Yeah, right. Before. It was for... Um... What was it? What was the movie for? The Golden Raspberry Award or something? But anyway, yeah, that does that. That is um, interesting. I know the Razzies because the one time Sandra Bullock went and accepted her award, which is like the most boss move ever. Oh like, hell yeah! yeah I would have totally went best. too. <laughs> yeah, so in, in that kind of vein, uh, I'll tell you what: we're gonna do two Hollywood things. So why don't you just fire up the Hollywood segment? Oh, 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 Hollywood! It's really got me hooray! hooray. Would, would. Uh, so on that vein, I wanted to ask you if uh -oh. you were 
uh, uh, sent up in a space shuttle and you could only take three Bruce Willis movies. Now that we know that his acting career is done and, and, and sadly he's not going to make any more public appearances or anything like that. What are your three like desert Island Bruce Willis movies? You have to be able to watch these over and over and over again. What are your three? Well, the first one that I'm going to uh, pick right away is uh, Last Boy Scout because that's a movie that I can watch over oh, and over and I over would not again. have guessed you would have picked that one. That's yeah, an interesting that's, pick. Me and the boys watch that shit all the time. It's got a hot Halle Berry in it, so that does oh, yeah. help a little oh, bit. She, she was smoking hot at that time. Yeah, yeah. she was young. Isn't it uh, uh, Damon Wayne's? Damon Wayne's is in it. He's his partner. But yeah, that movie is one of the movies that we've watched over and over again. We can quote it. I'm going to dance a jig. It's the kind of the shred. Like I know all the quotes and it's just a fun movie because at the end, he's even like teaching Damon Wayne's like, nah, if you hit him with a surfboard, you're like, Hey, surf's up, man. You know? So it's like a, it's almost like a parody of Die Hard at the point when he was doing Die Hard. Like, Oh, you're not, you're just shitty cop again. But last boy scouts, my first choice. That is, I mean, that's actually a great pick because I don't think if I would have asked 20 people to make those, um, to make the same picks, I don't think they would have picked Last Boy Scout, but you're right. That's like a really fun movie to watch that I probably haven't seen in like five oh, or six years. So I actually think I'm, putting that, I, I think I'm putting that on my weekend watch list because uh, that's a great, I, I like that one. Well, I'm going to go ahead and pick Die Hard uh, and, I, and I'll just pick the first one. Okay. Um, I mean, I think the first one, the second one, and then Die Hard Another Day is, is like the three that I'm interested in. But really, but the original Die Hard because it's, uh, no, Die Hard with a Vengeance. That, that's, that's mine. That's yeah, Die Hard one. with a Vengeance is really funny. Uh, but but I think the original Die Hard, it's a freaking classic. Talk about quotable lines from the movie. Uh, you know, yippee ki motherfucker. Or if you're watching it on TBS, yippee ki mother lover. Or um, does it sound like I'm ordering a pizza? <laughs> Or how yeah, about- I love it. And by the way, what's his face? Uh, oh my God, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Um, oh, the is bad the best, guy. Yeah, is the like the best villain of all time. Like he, uh, gosh, oh my God, I can't believe I'm drawing a blank on his name. Not, I oh, want to say Alan Ivan Rickman. Reitman, but I'm wrong. Alan it's Rickman. Alan Rickman. Um, yeah, Al- Alan Rickman is like the best villain. And I could watch that movie over and over and over again. Uh, plus it's a Christmas movie, so you could watch it at holiday times. It is. Um, and then I would say another one, I'd pick Pulp Fiction. Okay, now that's 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 curious. I'm I'm surprised you picked that because you know it is uh, Bruce Willis is in the movie, but he's only in like a fourth of it. Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess if you're gonna say that that's borderline Bruce Willis, no, no, you could still pick that one. That's fine. Well, but I'm thinking like well, I would no, pick so that here, one. well, okay. So then give me one of give me one of your other ones. Well, I mean, I'm with you, the diehards, but I go diehard with a vengeance all day. Is that uh, because one, of Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah, it, that and because of all the riddles and because it's actually hans gruber's brother so it's like it's you still get the taste of the first one mm-hmm. um but it's uh with a lot more action and f-bombs with uh samuel jackson so that's why i picked that one because he's that combo is just badass yeah and you're right that that movie like that was one of those ones that going into it i remember seeing it and thinking like ah this okay another die hard it's not gonna be good then i watched it i'm like oh that was actually incredibly enjoyable and oh, i really so i really liked good. it yeah i liked it better than the second one the second one is okay. It's good, but like I start to like lose it, or I'm like, okay, it's kind of not as good. Uh, mm-hmm. The first one is perfection, and I love it, so that's why I'd go with that one. Okay, um, so I, I I like that pick. Um, my third about- is hard though. That's got okay. that's a tough one. So I, I'm th- I'm in the I'm in I'm. Good. I have a feeling of what you're gonna pick. Uh, well, I mean, now that I'm looking at his list, there's a couple on here that I'm really, really, really fighting with right now. Oh, I think I know. I think it's another one that's on TV all the time. I don't and think I, I'm. A, I wasn't going to pick that one, but now that I'm looking at it, I was thinking about it. But it's probably going to be um, like a, a Last Boy Scouts one, Die Hard with a Vengeance two. <sighs> Man, I think I've got Serious Fighter, Serious Fighter. I think I'm going to go the fifth element. Oh, whoa. Okay. That was on my list as a potential, like trying to make my third spot as well. So, wow. Okay. Fifth element. Great pick because I believe it's. Corbin, 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 Dallas, Corbin, Dallas, Corbin, Dallas. That movie's incredibly rewatchable. Yes. So like that's This is the president for Christ's sake. Yeah. Oh, and you know, and Chris Tucker is 
is like the great comic relief in that. Roddy Rousey or whatever he is, Rod- yeah. Ruby Road. What yeah. about uh, what, what's a Gary Oldman is the freaking bad yes. guy? Oh my gosh, and he has like that weird haircut thing going on, plastic and, thing oh, on it. Yeah, I love it. No, that's a great rewatchable movie. See, I was gonna go. So I have uh, I have my Die Hard, I have Pulp Fiction, but if I have to drop Pulp out, I would add in Armageddon. Yeah. Because it's incredibly, even though I think both you and I have seen it a combined 392 times. In the um, theater. <laughs> in, yeah, right? Like, that's just a theater. That's not counting when it's on TNT and TBS. Um, I fall asleep to it every uh, Sunday. <laughs> but it's an easy rewatch. Like, it can be on in the background. You don't even have to pay attention to it. So that's good. What's your favorite I line? Say, <sighs> I think mine is, better make your peace with God, AJ. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, what he's chasing him on the rig. Yeah, that's <laughs> That's that's pretty fantastic. Um, I would say though, if I had if I dropped Pulp, because you're right, he's not in enough of the movie. If I was doing Die Hard, then Armageddon, and I had to pick another third one, I I might go with The Sixth Sense. Um, okay. I, but the only reason I'm hesitant on that one is because the re, it's not as rewatchable, right? No, I mean, you know that once you know the outcome, it gets once kinda... you know the outcome. So I think I'll leave Pulp Fiction in there, and I'll just do Die Hard, the original Pulp Fiction, and Armageddon as my three. Although I gotta say. You adding in the fifth element, Last Boy Scout was a total surprise pick. I, I, I'm super I impressed a, with that I, one. I got an honorable mention that I think is going to blow your mind, too. Okay, what is it? Over the Hedge, the animated movie. <laughs> Red. No, The Expendables. No. Um, Blind Date. Have you ever oh, seen Blind with Date? Uh, 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 Kim Basinger. Matt, uh, Kim Basinger and who else is? Um... That's that one dude that was the teacher in, like, everything. Um, that He was the ex-boyfriend. His name is uh, John Larroquette. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was, uh, yeah, that movie was like from like 1988 or something like 87. that. Yeah, that movie is awesome. It is so much fun. Uh, he, Kim Basinger basically is a blind date for uh, Bruce Willis that he got set up on. Uh, Phil Hartman's out. in it as well, too. Yeah, he is, he is, he yeah. is. They go, out, uh, they go out on a date, but the ex-boyfriend's kind of crazy. Um, so he's stalking them as they're on this date, and she's an alcoholic. So when she gets drunk, shit goes down. And it's funny as hell. So if you haven't seen that movie, please go watch it. Yeah, that's a great. Uh, you know, man, that's another one I might have to add to my. Uh, Do it. To add to my list. Do it. it is so much fun. <laughs> All right. Well, since we're still in the movie segment, I want to play a little belated version of uh, Rotten Tomatoes. So uh, let's get into it. You already played the theme song. Yeah. Okay. What uh, do we okay. Got? What movies? So this was supposed to take place last week, but uh, someone is a worldwide traveler and couldn't uh, couldn't be at home. Really, uh, Wa- Washington? You're you were in Washington. Worldwide? Well, worldwide. I guess I flew over a couple states. Yeah, you, you passed a few uh, longitude and latitude lines and all that, so I cool got <laughs> it. Um, anyways, this yeah. is because of the uh, Will Smith and Chris Rock uh, oh, slap oh, fest. Oh, oh. I was doing Oscar controversies. Okay. okay. So that's the theme on this one. So first up, and by the way, so since you know these are all Oscar movies, we all know that these are going to be higher scores. So this is going to be a really tight race because honestly, we're... Um, what she said we, we oh hold on uh and i have to grab <laughs> and i have to grab a pen and i'm that's really how aren't you sitting at your work desk no i'm in my my recording oh room. you're in your closet you're in the closet still <laughs> never get the jokes room. never land when his headphones aren't on that's what sucks yeah, i know okay okay <laughs> so now i'm ready i got a pen okay so the first movie up is i can't remember the year but this is the movie that was uh called the pianist and it's directed by <laughs> uh roman polanski starring adrian brody and a young uh, oh gosh what was her name she wanna... won best supporting actress and she was one of the youngest to win it um like 99 uh, it was 99 yeah yeah oh, gosh, what was her name? So um, right it was adrian brody oh man who else is in that movie this is definitely an example of where we should be better at this. I should have already known that. Anyways, whatever. The movie is a pianist. It's a, it's a war <laughs> drama film, okay? Uh, and it was written and produced and directed by Roman Polanski. Now, uh, it's a really two. sad movie. Like, totally, like, really, really sad movie. It's, like, about the Holocaust. And I was going to say, it's about a guy, a, a Jewish person, hiding from someone in the Holocaust, but he was a piano player, so they, like didn't kill him or something basically they thought he was like so talented he was like one of the one of them jews that was worth saving and then uh uh, but it's like a really really sad movie and all this kind of stuff anyways so the pianist well the controversy with roman polanski is you know he raped people uh including (laughs) underage women and he was about to be convicted of said rape 
and then fled the country before he could be convicted and has been hiding out. He can't set foot in the United States because he would get arrested, so he can't appear at any Oscars. But yet he continued to direct movies. And when he was nominated for this movie and when it started to won, the Oscars, they gave him a standing ovation, which I found was incredibly weird. But still, The Pianist is our first movie of the day on this Rotten Tomatoes game. Uh, I haven't seen this movie in probably like 15 years because uh, it's definitely not one that you rewatch. But mm-hmm. I remember it was pretty good. It was just depressing as hell. And I'm going to say it was like a 90. Yeah, no, this is definitely one of those uh, films uh, that everybody loved except for that guy. So, <sighs> And except for the parents of the girl who was raped. Yeah, I'm sure they didn't really like it too much. If I was that guy, if I was that guy's d- dad, I'd be over there in freaking wherever country he's at and try to find that bastard. Anyway, yeah, I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, no, I would say 94. 94. Yeah, I, I think that's probably a good pick. Okay, next up, this is an example of someone declining their Oscar. So uh, in 1970-whatever, the movie Patton came out, P-A-T-T-O-N, Patton, yeah. about the uh, uh, war general uh, George Patton, who was who was kind of like a total prick like he 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 helped really win world war ii but he you know he would beat his own soldiers he like threatened people he was kind of like a a a jerk uh an effective jerk but a jerk nonetheless Mm -hmm. but george c scott uh was nominated for best actor and not only refused to come to the uh uh, awards he said that whoever wins the award shouldn't uh, accept it because how can you judge artistic performances and say that one was better than the other and by the way he has a wow. like he has a, a point like great point yeah like how these are all artistic endeavors how can you say one was better than the other but whatever and so he won and wound up saying no thank you i don't want the award so that is that controversy uh the movie starts off with its famous like Patton standing in front of the giant normic uh yeah, ginormous flag. american flag and giving the speech and all that kind of stuff it's been imitated by everyone including johnny knoxville in the movie jackass um yeah, really a movie yeah documentary yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh but in the movie Patton, it is a good movie i remember this is another one that i haven't seen in years good movie i think it came out in 1970 um I'm going to say this gets deducted a few points because the Vietnam War is going on. So I'm thinking maybe there's some like backlash against patriotic war films, but it still has got to be pretty high. I'm going to go the same score I did last time. I'm going to do a 90. Okay, I'll write your 90 down. And I will say, I don't think so. I think it's a little bit lower. I'm going to go with 88 because um, it was a war movie. It was, again, like you said, in Vietnam. And also, it's a very niche like genre. So if yeah. you don't like war or, or battling or fighting, then you're not going to watch it. So I bet there are a lot of people that didn't watch it. So I'm going to say 88. Yeah, I, and, and I, that's, that was kind of my thinking, right? Like that time that you were in, I don't think people were necessarily mm-hmm. really. Do- okay, the next one. Up is a love, movie that, not war, man. man. Uh, the next one is one of the greatest movies of all time. One of my personal favorites. It is The Godfather. And the controversy oh. with this one is just like George Patton, Marlon Brando. Uh, also Great didn't accept people. his award except for what he did accept instead was he sent up an american indian by the name of uh, uh something little feather i think is her uh, name and she stood up at the awards and accepted it on behalf of all the poorly treated native americans in this country and uh so she accepted the award and it was it really pissed off the academy um which is why marlon brando was kind of blackballed for a while like he, he wasn't given good roles after that too much uh, <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, that one is, honestly, I think that one's more insulting than George C. Scott saying, hey, I don't think you should judge us as actors. It's all, you know, whatever, I decline the award. Yeah. I think sending up, like, uh, someone in full, like, Native American garb, the full headdress, the full everything to, like, make an acceptance speech for you, like, that was a little bit more controversial because it really pissed off the Academy. Oh yeah, and they now it would be all about inclusion. They they'd want her to be up there. Oh, they would cheer self. now. Yeah, they would. I know. Do it. They would cheer it's now. So hypocritical. It's hilarious. But it really is. All right, I have not seen The Godfather all the way through, so I cannot. No uh, way. Yes, this is not way. a true statement that you're making right now. Yes, it is. I have not. My wife has not either. So we've talked about actually. Is this because you now. don't have the attention span to sit through a three-hour movie? Uh, no, this is because I didn't have access to it when I was younger and it came out, and I didn't have any um, ambition to watch it when I didn't when it was already over. So oh, okay. when it was already made. So, but I'll watch them. I will. I've seen parts. I know about them, but I think 
it probably didn't do that great. I don't think it was at 90. I think it was probably in the 80s. So I'm going to say 85 on this one. Oh, see, I think you're way off. This is one of the most beloved movies of all time for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic. I'm going to say that this one is in Toy Story territory. One of the only movies rated a perfect 100. Oh, you think so? I think so. Or at least I think there's a chance. You're going to say 100. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at you. Well, I mean, I... Remember, I'm not very good. Okay, so right. well, you have this, the answers written down, so I don't know what. I'm... <laughs> no, I don't have the answers yet. I look them at the very end. I we add them up really quick. Okay, so next up uh, is uh, you're going to play a clip here in just a second. So this is uh, the movie that we're going to talk about. The final one is called The Sting. Now, when The Sting was up, uh, it, it won Best Picture. Uh, and it was one of the nominees this year. And so the uh, famed actor, and he's been around since the 40s. Uh, his name is David Niven. He's a British actor, very well respected. So he's like, so imagine coming up in the Oscars, you've been waiting the whole, the whole, um, uh, the whole oh. show. This is the this is the award for best picture, and they bring out the legendary David Niven, who gets this like rounding applause because he's like old classic, old school Hollywood, and he comes out on stage, and he's about to announce the best actor win. A streaker comes by and runs naked uh, past the um, past the the David Niven who was caught off guard, and he has a great line at the end. Go ahead and play that clip. And someone, quite likely, there's the streaker. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that um, that was almost bound to happen. But isn't it fascinating that, that probably the only laugh that man will ever get in his life is by stripping off and showing his shortcomings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a great lie. Cause remember you're caught off guard, just like Chris Rock getting slapped and how he kept oh, it yeah. together and like really proceeded on like an absolute goddamn professional David Niven. I mean, cause this is caught completely off guard and oh, just yeah. to be able to come up with a pretty witty line uh, right off the cuff, I thought was just really classic. It kind of is like that dry British sense of humor. I loved it. But anyways, the movie that he was in, or the, the, he was introducing Best Picture, the winner of the Best Picture was The Sting that has Robert Redford and Paul Newman uh, in it. It is uh, has the guy who played Quint um, from Jaws. I mean, the, the, the amount of actors in this is just staggering. And yeah. this is another one of those movies that if it's on like TCM or, or something like that when I'm flipping through the channels, I will stop stop and watch it it's a stop and watch movie for me i love this movie uh and that's our final one the sting what do you give it I, i'm gonna say since it's an older movie and uh they have didn't you seen have this, it uh, I, I think so i don't remember i haven't looked it up yet um but uh i am gonna say yeah i've seen this movie i'm looking at the cover right now um i'm gonna say like 97 yep i'm right there with you i also say a 97 so it doesn't matter at all now. I was hoping I would get some points back. Though. Man, well, here we go. So the pianist, also called the penis. Did you call me? I know, right? Uh, uh, Roman Polanski, the rapist, uh, made yeah. a movie that well, the critics not only gave him a standing ovation, but they gave him 95 points. I said 90 and you said 94. So you were pretty much dead on on that one. Next up was Patent. George C. Scott saying, don't judge me with other actors. I refuse this award. Scored a 94 with the critics. Uh, I said 90 and you said 88. Next up was The Godfather, a movie that you inexplicably have not seen. I gave it a perfect 100. You said 85. Score is a 97. It, 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 it deserves uh -huh. every bit of that. That movie's fantastic. And then finally, The Sting uh, with a streaker running behind him and David Niving saying uh, the guy has a small penis, essentially. Uh, we both gave it a 97, and the movie is a 94. So I win, but literally only by a couple of points because of the Godfather score. Other than that, you were crushing me. Uh, that Godfather score just kind of sunk you a little bit, but I, I won literally by like two points. So I nailed the pianist. Uh, you sure did nail that penis. Play that, uh, get that drop and play that one, please. <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, that is it for our Hollywood segment. And uh, Chris, do you have anything else going on, man? No, I got to get out of here. I think I have a kid somewhere I'm supposed to be paying attention to. 
Yeah, I'm supposed to be doing this whole thing called work, uh, but I literally took the time out of my day to come do this. Uh, I used to do that all the time when I was in Beverly Hills. We I'd go to the other studio and just record. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, that's the joys of working from home. Uh, right. All right, everybody. Well, I, I, I'm so glad that we're back at it. Uh, we took a week off last week. Uh, go to This Is Funner. Um, listen to all of the glorious podcasts there. Mine is called Listen to This. We are winding down season seven. It's almost coming to a close and uh, really excited. I think it's been one of our best seasons yet and uh can't, can't wait to uh see everyone's reaction and hope everyone uh, comments and recommends to a friend yeah the latest episode came out yesterday it's called sing along songs and then uh we got two more episodes coming out until the end of the season so check that out and uh all the other shows up there uh and then hit me up chris underscore donovan and he's like sinatra's rat balls or something yep that's exactly what it is please send all your complaints to sinatra's rat balls <laughs> <laughs> all right everyone we'll talk to you later later